All right, we got another box. Okay, sorry. Yeah, right. We got another yum box. Do it. Yeah. Yum box edition three. Three. Yum box edition three. Welcome to Italy. Why, thank you. Happy to be here. Let's show them. All right, so our yum box, this one is from Italy. Uh, it looks like it's backwards for me, but um, anyway. Greetings from Italy. Birthplace of the world's most valuable painting. That's going on my suitcase. Looks like we have a visitor at the back door. Where shall we start? Venice, Rome, Florence, Naples. Semichel de Bari. Sardinia. Yeah, Sardinia. So I'm related to 40% of all the males in Sardinia. Apparently my dad's uh, paternal DNA line went through there and stopped off for about 16,000 years. So I'm in, in, in related to all those folks. So this is how this works. What do you think you eat when you're in Sardinia as a snack? What do you eat in Sardinia as a snack? A sardine? No. Oh. Unless you're a cat. Maybe oh. you're a cat. Okay. You might eat pan tostos, um, crocchitini, bruschettini del sapor fresco delicio, crunchy, delicious, and fine tasting bruschetta. Bruschetta. Ooh, that sounds good. Yeah. Pomodoro, tomato. So there's some bruschetta. Italian oregano. Let's. Yeah, let's we're not gonna eat it. that right now let's though. Let's look at all this stuff first. Because we'll, we've already eaten dinner, we'll and I want to get straight stuff. to the. If Dessert. You're gonna, if you're gonna eat crisps, cr truffle crisps would be good. Truffle crisps? Mm -hmm. So, truffle crisps, in other words, mushroom crisps. And that would be, um, yeah. Truffles or mushrooms? Yeah, sort of. So, ingredients potatoes, sunflower oil, salt, corn, starch, chicory root fiber, natural and artificial flavors. No mushrooms? No, but. This is confusing. Distributed by Universal Yums, New Jersey. But it said Italy. Well, I guess it's made everywhere. in Italy, but distributed uh, by. All right, so it's made in Italy, but distributed uh, through New um, Jersey, probably. These um, look good. Orange, carrot, boom dolce. Boom dolce. That looks good. Let's These are little it. orange cakes. Mm. Let's read about those. And carrots. Look, it's got oranges and carrots together. Who would have thought? Orange zest carrot cake. You, you're probably familiar with carrot cake. Well, really just one version of Should carrot cake. It? Loaded with spices and nuts and topped with cream cheese frosting. But then there's Italian style carrot cake. Free of all the bells and whistles, Italy's take highlights the natural sweetness of the carrots with just a dash of orange zest. Get ready to discover a whole new kind of carrot cake craving. All right, would you like to try it really first? sounds really good. You want some of sure. it? Take a bite. Oh, that's so good. It kind of reminds me of a, uh, a Twinkie. It kind it of looks like, like a Twinkie. It's like an orange Twinkie. That's really good. It's like an orange Twinkie, except it's just uh, two slices of cake instead of, you know, the thing that's just like injected with. Italy it in 60 seconds. What you might know about Italy. Hmm. Simply put, Italy is obsessed with wine. The country produces the most wine of any country in the world, nearly one fifth of global production. That's All one out of every five. Many regions of Italy make their own varieties from Red Chianti to Bubbling Prosecco. I like Chianti. We should be drinking wine. And some uh, well, some fava beans. Italy box. It's like little a bottle of Chianti like and some wrong. fava beans. Oh, it's man. Wrong. Okay, what else? What else we got? Um, so we have another cake. All right, there's a the cake. We'll eat that later. That was smart. They sent two cakes. Yeah, because it's good. Crisp almond cookies. What's Frank doing over there? Amaretini. He's already had dinner. That's why he's cleaning these are, himself. These are probably really good too. Amarettini. 
Ready for the world's tastiest love story? The tale between these classic cookies begins in 1719 Serrano, when a young, young couple overheard that a cardinal from Milan was visiting their church. Wanting to prepare him for a treat, they improvised a cookie recipe using just the apricot kernels, sugar, and egg whites they had on hand. The cardinal loved them. So much so, he blessed the couple to a long and happy union. Not only did they stay happily hitched, their cookies went on to become an Italian icon. So, are you feeling love? Better yet, are you tasting it? Save those for later. Hey, I think that was Romeo and Juliet. Was Maybe. it? No, it wasn't. No, I don't know. So, you, you don't want to eat those yet? Give me another. No, you I, can't I want, eat everything. Well, I want to oh, eat something that's this in dessert. Here? Oh, I want my dessert, gosh. man. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Italians love dark chocolate, but don't yeah. take our word for it. Look at the numbers. On average, Italians buy 12.5 million tons of dark chocolate a year and just under 4.5 million tons of milk chocolate. So why is dark chocolate so popular? For that, we don't need to provide any numbers, just the yum in front of you. With raspberry sweetness and crunchy almond nuttiness, it's by far the most effective and decadent way to answer the question. Raspberry dark chocolate is my absolute favorite of all chocolates. Well, guess what we're gonna do? We're cracking this baby open. So it comes in an actual gold foil covering. That's like pretty and it sounds good. I bet that's, I bet that's my favorite. Oh, look, and it's all, all um, yums. Okay, here you go. It's my favorite yum. Get what you want. Yeah. I'll get one. They mm -hmm. come in these handy little uh, squares. Oh, yeah, it's so good. I mean, the HEB raspberry dark chocolate's pretty good too, though. I had some of that today. I mean, I like this a lot, but I like the HEB dark chocolate raspberry. It is very good. This is um, really dark chocolate. And uh, what percent is it? 70. That's all? Yeah, it's 70 right there. So, that was delicious. Mm hmm. And see. If we were keeping track of this, um, Universal Yums comes with a little card. Tells you where the stuff is from. And then you keep track of it over here and you rate it. And you can uh, decide what you really liked and what you didn't like. And I could just stop there and just have the dark chocolate. What else okay. we got? Wait, wait. Let's read about Florence. All Home right, here comes, the... uh, here comes Florence. Home of the Uffizi Gallery the finest collection of Renaissance art in the world. I wonder how close I got in that name. Probably not very close. All right. Okay, ketchup potato chips, just like in Canada. Yeah, Canada. We have here ketchup you go, Canada. Potatoes. I don't know if you came up with it first or the Italians came up with it, but here you go. Ketchup potato chips. Whee! 30 years ago, potato chips were scorned in Italy. Scorned. Without the traditional appeal of tirale or biscotti, they had zero footing in the snack market until best friends Alfredo Moratti and Andrea Romano came along. Freddie and Andrea. With the mission of bringing chips to Italy, they started their business. Arnica, producing both traditional flavors and traditionally totally new ones like ketchup. Ketchup. Before you, we tell you if they succeeded or not, we think you should try a chip or two. Yeah. Okay, we've had some. Great news. You just tasted the current number one brand in Italy. Number one brand. That, that's worth putting it back up there. There you go. Ketchup chips. You think that's true? Italians love them. You think that's the number one chip in Italy? I don't know, Is but I know. like the Doritos of Italy? Maybe, yeah, it's like the Doritos of Italy. Uh... I don't know, but the Canadians love them. What else we got? Okay, a little, um, a little Q and A. All right, question and answer. Here it comes. This poet invented the three-line rhyme, plus a comedy, nothing short of divine. William Shakespeare. Dante. <laughs> oh yeah, William Shakespeare's English. Hmm. 
just go back to eating cake. Dante, your English, oh no. Your degree in English did nothing for you <laughs> with that <laughs> trivia. How about you want to try again? Um, yeah, sure. This Italian explorer made one heck of a trip. He landed in the Bahamas, but that was only just the tip. What? Columbus? Yep. I thought he was Spanish. I mean, apparently not. <laughs> not according to the ums. Oh, boy. One more. From, from nude sculptures to chapel ceilings, his classical art gives you all the feelings. Hmm. Michelangelo. How do you know that? Because I'm a damn artist, that's why. Wow. You're, you might... It kind of, if you get one more right, then you've redeemed yourself from I don't want not that knowing to happen. any Dante. Dante. He proved planets revolve around the sun. Since you are, uh, what are you? Yeah, a I'm a, a, a global ambassador. Yeah, no, uh, no, um, yeah, I, I am a, uh, a solar system ambassador for the Jet Propulsion Laboratory at NASA. You should know this. He helped prove planets revolve around the sun and observed Saturn's rings. Sounds like interstellar fun. Copernicus. No. Damn it. You can try again. Galileo. Yep. There we go. Okay. Oh, these look really good too. These are like Cheerios. Cheerios. Terralini. 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 Lemon y pepe. Yeah, that's exactly So that's lemon and pepper little cakes, I think. Walk little... down a U.S. snack aisle and you'll see chips on chips on chips. The same is true in Italy, except with tarali. These crunchy bread spirals are an Italian go-to, available in countless flavors. We're not exaggerating. When putting together this box, we tried rosemary coffee and even egg varieties before we fell in love with this lemon and pepper one. Mm. With sweet citrus and a kick of cracked pepper, this Torelli is totally top notch. Top notch Torelli. All right, We're, are we gonna try that one or do you want? I you, think we should try that we one. We should try that one? That sounds kinda good. Don't we have any, uh, is there any other uh, dessert stuff in there? Um, oh, there's Ooh, this. There's, um, but we're not gonna try that because we've already had chocolate. We're not? No, hazelnut milk chocolate bar. And once again, Cool, very cool. Yum, All right, let's, you, you want to do this then? two of them. Do you want to help us? Yeah. Okay. All right, we're going to open up the Terralini. I'm going to go on with the terrible. corner. And it's, it looks like, it kind of looks like a, oh, has a consistency is, of a... Terralini. It is Terralini. Yeah, has a consistency, I know what I'm talking about. It's a about. Cheerio. It's, it's, it's shaped like a giant Cheerio, but it has the consistency Cheerio. of a pretzel. Like something with a hint with with a hint of lemon and um, I don't taste the pepper, but it tastes the lemon. I taste the pepper. You do? Mm -hmm. All right. These are pretty good. I don't know what you'd eat them with. This would be good with. Uh, it's like if you put charcuterie on a, on a Cheerio. Sh charcuterie. This would be good with charcuterie. That's pretty good. All right. You want me to read you about the hazelnut yep. chocolate bar? All right. Hazelnut chocolate bar. Here we go. I don't know if I like hazelnuts. Oh, I do. If we're talking hazelnuts, there's no better place in the world to go than the Piedmont region of northern Italy. The native hazelnuts are prized for their excellence. They're smaller, sweeter, and nuttier than those grown in Turkey or the United States. That might explain why this rich chocolate bar filled to the brim with roasted Piedmont hazelnuts is the top selling chocolate bar in Italy and why we're fully addicted to it. Hazelnuts are kind of rare. They only, those trees only grow in certain areas so you can only grow so many hazelnuts. And, and uh, so there you go. We're not gonna eat that though, right? Or are we? We got two of them. Not right now because we- Okay, chocolate we bar with Italian hazelnuts. Chocolate. What we doing? Where would Northern Italy be? Uh, toward the top. Venice? Yeah. That's Northern? Yep. Okay. 
Venice. Well, that's Frank. Cool. That's Frank. He's up there. He's done cleaning himself. He's having a little nap. So, there's No, the we're not going to do that. Yeah, we're not going to do the young bag. Because it's always the same little candies, right? No. No? Huh? Mm-mm. Oh, maybe it's it has Italian candies in it. Cell soda? Okay. Cell soda candy. Is it? Tiramisu. Oh, tiramisu. I'm going to eat that one. You don't like tiramisu. Oh, yeah, I do. It's chocoboga. Chocoboga? Chocoboga. You want a chocoboga? And I think that's all. And that's all. I might eat a tiramisu since so you won't soda. let me eat any of the chocolate. Stuff Sorry. Here we go, tiramisu. Let's see what's in there. It is chocolate. It is a ball of chocolate. Boom. Bite it in half. Every modern Italian restaurant serves tiramisu, but in the early 1960s, it was only served by mm. one, La Bicherie in Treviso. According to legend, owner Ada Campiol was recovering from childbirth when Good. she asked the pastry chef to whip up a pick-me-up so he combined lady fingers Mascarpone, masca, mascarpone cheese, and cocoa powder, creating tiramisu, which literally means pick me up. Wow. The flavor combination became an overnight icon, which you'll get to taste in this luxurious chocolate filled with cocoa, coffee infused cocoa cream. That's what I was about to say. It tastes like really, really rich chocolate. Uh, I don't know if that's. Was um, it good? And uh, and and oh my has a, a coffee this taste is to it. Fun. Fantastic, really good. That was this my favorite is fun. so far. Guess what, chocoboga is. I don't know, but I'll eat it. Give it to me. You can have one of them, but the other one's mine. Okay, chocoboga. Guess what it is? Do you want to taste it? Choco. Can... It's chocolate uh, mouth. So taste it. Taste <laughs> chocoboga. Taste it would be chocolate mouth, right? Taste it and boca. then guess. Dame su boca. Just, no. There we go. No jokes. Taste it. All right. Wrapper is off. Interior wrapping is off. Once again, we have a round chocolate ball. I'm going to bite it in half and we'll That's see what's inside. That's probably the most exciting of all the things. The Cheerios are good. But okay. What do you think it is? What's in there? It's full of flavor. Um... Ooh, I got crackle. It's like uh, it's like I'm eating pop rocks. The strawberries in the town of Nimi are anything but ordinary. They're volcanic, <laughs> grown in a volcanic crater where sunlight is ample and wind is minimal. The berries are plumper and juicier than those anywhere else in Italy. Cool, huh? Here's something even cooler: these luscious milk chocolate truffles. With explosive strawberry pop rocks, they take volcanic strawberry to a level that Nimi can't achieve. It is. It's really good. It's good. It's, it actually does have pop do you wanna, rocks. Do you want to tell the story of when we went to a volcano? So, we went to um, Vesuvius in Italy, volcano. We were going to go jump in uh, because that's, you know, I mean. We were not going to jump in. We were going to look in. Oh. So, we were just going to look then. Um, but... The weather was so bad once we got up there, we couldn't see 15, 20 feet in front of us, and they wouldn't let us go up there. So, it's kind of like when we pop rocks, man. When we went to Washington and we and we drove by Mount St. Helens, and it was like two hours away, and I was like, Oh, this is so cool! I've wanted to go there since I was a kid. And you're like, Yeah, it's too far. And so, we go on to Seattle and we Get to Seattle the next morning, and you're getting your Starbucks coffee in Seattle, which is really weird. Um, and Vesuvius was active. Vesuvius or St. Helens? St. Helens. You're See? Right. St. Helens. See, so you're getting confused. I know because I was taken back there, and how you, how you. The pop rocks took are that experience for me are going off down my throat. As, a, as, a, as I'm it eating, <laughs> it's weird. It sounds yeah. good. I should. It does sound good. 
Okay, we got one more thing. What do we got? Okay. Um, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. No, oh, she's Q not letting me get it. Q&A. Q&A. Here we go. Legend has it. Okay, true or false? Legend has it room, Rome was built by wolves. Quick. Uh, true. False. Damn it. According to lore, twi twins Romulus and Remus were raised by wolves. Later, right. Romulus was built... Romulus built Rome, Rome in his See? name. See? Okay. Wolf. Next. Mice were considered a culinary delicacy. True. Wealthy dinner party hosts would often weigh the cooked rodents called dormice to impress their guests. Whee! Next. Romans believed there was a god for everything. War, love, and even the sewer. Yeah, you need a sewer god. True. Mars was the god of war. Cupid was the god of love. And Cloacina was the goddess of the sewer. Chlamydia, I think you meant. No, don't even Cloacina? say that. That's well, I'm just, I don't know. After work each day, everyone headed to public baths to bathe themselves. Well, we know that's true. Yeah. The folks didn't just bathe. The, ba the baths were a prime spot to socialize with people of all classes. We went there. Oh, yeah. A little bathing. A little phallic symbol. <laughs> hmm. Well, if you've been to Pompeii, you know. Oh, I know. Anyone visiting Rome was mandated to wear a toga. Uh, true. False. Damn it. Only Roman citizens were allowed to honor the wearing of a toga. Hmm. I got one out of seven. The highest paid athlete of all time I'm an educated lived in American. ancient Rome. What? The highest paid athlete of all time lived in ancient Rome. Uh, true. Who was it? What did he do? Uh, Achilles. He jumped over stuff. Chariot racer oh. Gaius okay. Apuleius Diocles amassed a fortune equivalent to roughly $15 billion today. Wow. Racing chariots. See, more. even back Keep then. The commentary down. Okay, sorry. Locals dyed their hair using fermented leeches and burnt plants. True. true. The popular colors were red and black, but some true elites powdered their hair with gold dust. Mm. Last one. After Colosseum events, gladiator sweat was sold to the public. True. You know they want uh, some of that stuff. It was a beauty product thought to improve complexion. Yeah. You bet. Okay. Give me some of them. Last one. Last, last thing. Last thing. Froletti al cranberry. Cranberry froletti. Baked fresh with real Italian cranberries. Now for a crunchy berry concoction. Many countries prefer their cookies soft and chewy, but Italy is a huge exception. Why are crumbly cookies the local go-to? Because they're all the better for dunking into the country's favorite drinks, coffee, wine, and even milk. Boom. Before you dig into these crunchy cookies, we recommend you pour, your, pour yourself a drink. Whatever you choose to dunk them in, they are best enjoyed the Italian way. We'll do it with coffee tomorrow. How about Let's that? do that with coffee. We'll have this uh, tomorrow morning at coffee. And is that it? That's it. That's all of it. So that's, uh, that's what's in the Italian box for... Uh, Universal Yums, I highly suggest that if you want to make this friends of your happy. This yeah. Is, I like Italy. Yeah. If you want to make your friends happy, uh, go to the Universal Yums box uh, website and order your friends a little box. There's uh, cheap little boxes, medium little boxes, and expensive little boxes. And if you want to make your wife happy, take her to Italy. Yeah. yeah. Happy wife is happy life. There you go. Out. We're done. And on that note. Boom. Dose. You could have done without that. <laughs>